everybody, I just kind of want to make a quick video giving some pretty useful tips, uh, in fact, nine of them, to try and make you a better player by the end of the video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. We've been growing like crazy, and it really does help a lot, so please do. Thank you. All right, so for number one, we have Don't Skip Lives. And I mean that. Until you reach Second Sacrifice Life 10,000, I don't suggest skipping a single life. The reason for that is you need the items. You'd be surprised at how many players life 20,000, 30,000, sometimes even 40,000 lives into the game still need items from rebirthing. I can't stress this enough, Superstitious can take a lot of items if you don't know what you're doing with recipes. Enchanted items take a lot of items to begin with. Until you hit life 10,000 after hitting Second Sacrifice, don't skip a single life. So number two, we have Salvaging. Since I suggested don't skip lives, well, how are you supposed to get shards? How are you going to get platforms? How are you going to get enchanteds? Get rid of your useless reborns. If it doesn't have a fusion or an evolution, it's considered useless. Keep enough of them, like 5, 10, 15, so that you could craft superstitious items if you need that specific item, whatever. Do that. Keep some of them. But assuming you have like a hundred mineral wheels sitting in your inventory that are never going to turn into an enchanted or a fusion or an evolution, salvage them. So that way you can make enchanteds and buy things in the reborn shop and all that stuff so seriously salvage the items that don't turn in a, uh, into anything mineral wheel is a great example another really good example plasma scanner if i'm correct this item has neither a fusion or an evolution do it there's no reason not to and i assume you have a shitload of these sitting in your uh, in your inventory please go do this <laughs> there's no reason not to and that brings me to number three, to use the wiki. The wiki will have all the information on fusions, evolutions, item stats, what you need to craft a superstitious, uh, what you need to create an enchant. It has all of that information just publicly sitting there, free for anybody to use at any time of the day. Use it. I use it almost every day. The wiki is great, it'll be linked in the description. Please, if you're looking for stats in an item because it's RNG based and you don't know it, or if you want to know how many drops your mind makes in a second and you want to know the ore value because it seems random, go to the wiki. Stop wasting your time. Now, speaking of learning, why don't we talk about YouTube? So number four, analyze, don't copy. What I mean by this is when you see a new setup video from your favorite YouTuber, which is definitely not me, or if someone's teaching you a setup in person, actually try to figure out what it is that's going on rather than just kind of watching and copy pasting it. It's a lot worse to do that than you think. You actually want to analyze what they're doing. Sit down and learn what it is you're seeing so that by the end of it, maybe when you need to upgrade your setup again, you could do that efficiently. You could use what was used last time to make a better setup. Take the good parts of it, leave all the okay or bad parts of it out, and create something a lot better. And even later on, when you're making another setup, you could take what you've learned over the past few setups and make a really good setup. So seriously, the meta is always changing. Analyze, don't copy, actually try to sit down and learn what it is people are doing. Seriously, this is like making setups is easy it's not very difficult the only time it's hard to make a setup is if you're trying to do something that hasn't been done before but that's not usually the case hey a little bit of a plug here uh this brings me to number five which is if you're in the need for uc or a game pass for the game or something like that then you could join the official minor save in discord which is on screen right now and in the description participate in my community events where I literally give out free UC uh, and other prizes related to Miner's Haven. Sometimes even not. Sometimes we give out Discord Nitro and Robux, whatever. And you could even win a custom cool role in Discord for winning. So if you're interested, go join there. Uh, there's no requirement. There's no uh, restrictions. You can just join and have fun. This brings me to number six. Save your boxes. 
you'd be shocked at how many items you're going to get are garbage. Save your boxes for if there's an exotic you don't have in the boxes, or an item specific to the box that you need to get. For instance, relic items like Contraland. Open your Red Bandits until you get it. If it's an item like a premium item, you could probably get that just through the UC shop, honestly. You, you don't need to, to open boxes for them. When you're grinding for an item out of boxes, you're going to get them anyways. Don't make it your priority. Chase down items that you need to chase down. And keep the rest of your boxes so that when the next event comes out, you can have enough to get that item rather quickly. That's why whenever a new box exotic goes live, that... I get it the same day because I have so many boxes saved up to where it doesn't really matter. So just a really big tip for the new players, save your boxes until you've gotten all the possible exotics at the moment. What what I'm what I'm saying is what I'm saying is you could set an auto clicker on your screen to prevent yourself from getting kicked while in a solo island with an RP farm running overnight. As long as you're not macroing or rebirthing and all you're doing is RP farming, you're fine. I did this every day for a few weeks, and I went from 300 million RP to 1.03 billion RP. I'm literally on the leaderboards for RP now. Seriously, if you need RP, don't do it manually. Don't waste your time. Just go farm it. It does not take that long. Next, we have number eight which is do the gladiator challenge. If you're new to the game, seriously, just sit down, take some time, do the gladiator challenge. You'll get a very useful exotic item for the newer players. Uh, it's a furnace. Just go here, do it. It's very close to the island. Uh, here's the, the spot zoomed out if you'd like. It's in that little cave there. And it will give you this gladiator's fury exotic furnace, which let's see how much this does. see this that's not bad for right off the rip check it out maybe a look at the wiki and see what it does we have our ninth tip check the mask man it's just as simple as that he usually arrives if I'm correct late night Thursdays from CST uh, is there all day Friday Saturday and Sunday or no, sorry, he leaves Sunday night. His inventory refreshes every day uh, at daily reset, which for me is 7 p.m. CST. I very much recommend checking him every day that he's there, and every time his uh, thing changes, there's not really a reason not to. There's always good items there pretty consistently, and sometimes he even sells exotics that are never going to be obtainable again, so... Hey, little uh, editor's note, there is one other tip that I completely forgot to say, is to go to Fargield every day. He's right here on the bridge uh, that I'm going to go to. He literally gives you free boxes and free UC and all that fun stuff. And if you're done with that, go to the box guy. He also, go he also gives you a free box every day. For nothing. Just go do it. There's no reason not to. Thanks. Sorry. But other than that, I think I'm going to head out. There will be a new video coming up in a couple days. I do have college starting Monday, so I'm going to do my best to keep videos flowing and just to be a good creator. Thank you guys for all the love and support lately. It's been absolutely incredible. I can't really understand why I'm kind of popping up again. So thank you guys. Love you a lot. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.